Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. Talk about real estate so that you can understand the numbers because a lot of the information that's coming out now is all over the map. So it's real important that you understand what's going on in our market so that you can make the right decision. A lot of pundits out there, and I've seen some people I really respect, and I just wish they would pronounce realtor correctly. It's not realtor. It's realtor. R-E-A-L-T-O-R. There isn't a U in there. <laughs> I see these people all the time. Realtors. And it caught my attention because I was watching uh, one. She used to be the uh, one of the chairman of the Dallas Fed, Danielle DiMartino Booth. I have a great lot of respect for her. She puts out some great content. But she said, realtors are not telling uh, people the truth. Well, that may be true, but I don't think there's a collective voice out there that's saying things are going to be great. You know, we're all a little nervous about the market, but not really that much because, you know, in our and our task is not to sell you a house that's always going to go up. Our, our, our job is to manage you through the minefield of regulations. There's a lot of it. Get you through the transaction. People are always going to buy and they're always going to sell for life-changing reasons. So it's our job to manage you through that process and not be economists. Cause, and I've heard it. I've heard ages ago, oh, no, you're fine. You know, marry the house, date the rate. I hate that. Stop that. That's... I'm a big fan of knowing what my payment's going to be, and I want it to stay there. I just don't like the uncertainty of a real estate rate changing because somebody told me that it's going to change down the road because they don't know, folks. Now, new builds right now are offering some pretty decent products because they're buying down your rate for 30 years at like 4.99. That's why their business is growing. And they've got the money to do it. So that's why they're offering that. Now, there's there's different rates you get depending on how much money you put down. So when you meet with the builder, they'll, they'll lay it out for you. But as usual, I like to look and see where we're at today to help us make these decisions going forward. Because you remember the last one I had come out just a couple videos ago said, you know, prices plunged. And they did. And I show that. But I also show you how they stopped. So I'm going to touch on that again today. Here's our weekly summary market conditions. You can see these are accepted contracts. So they're really low, but they're going to be that way until I would say three weeks from today. They should start coming back up as we get to the second week of January. But like I said the other day, all eyes are on January. We'll see. Here's the median agent days on market. I mean, look how low we got at one point down to five. You were getting an offer on your house in less than five days, and now we're up to 49. So I get a lot of comments and questions from people. Oh, I've been on the market three weeks. What do I do? Well, you wait. Um, you know, you can. I did see one yesterday where they priced it low deliberately to 475. As soon as I pulled it up, I go, that thing's worth more than 475. It was up in Scottsdale. I finally heard back from the agent um, several hours later. Thank you for being prompt. And said that they already had seven offers. And the reason did they did was because they priced it deliberately low and said that all the offers had to be submitted by four o'clock on Tuesday. So it's a three-day people. We've talked about them before. And so that's what they did, and it worked out for them. Now, the offers came in all the way up to 510. So I'm not sure where it's landed yet. Uh, we won't know till it closes. But here's what's going on at average list price here the time of acceptance you can see that it went down and now it's flatlining and here we are again on average price per square foot and you can see once again that we had this big dip and now it's just looking like the horizon it's just level waiting for something here we are again this is the Cromford market index dropping like a rock and guess what staying flat staying flat went up slightly went up slightly because we have a little less inventory. Inventory has been dropping a little bit. And I'll show you on our chart here. Active listings um, are slowing down at a faster rate than we've seen in the past few years. You can see that it goes down every holiday season, but we've come down a lot quicker. Why do I point that out? People are just not listing their house. <clears throat> now, there is a lot of conversation going on says, oh, those poor people that bought at the peak of the market. 
they bought it January and February 2022. They, they've got to be just kicking themselves. Well, maybe not. If they're not planning on moving. I just kind of put a pencil to a $500,000 mortgage with 10% down. At 3%, your principal and interest is $1,800. Now, there are people saying, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for prices to come down. Okay. I do that. I don't blame you because rates went up. Rates went up to 7%. Now they're back down at 63 So if you're looking at that same house and it goes from 500000 to 400000 and you buy it today at today's rates, your payment is $600 a month higher than that person that paid 500000 for it back in January and February. So don't feel sorry for them. They're sitting in a nice house with a very low payment. Will they lose some equity? Sure, on paper. If they're not going anywhere, they will be fine. But they're, they've got a lower payment than you're going to have later. So while they're getting beat up in the news saying, you know, 60% or there's 700,000 people that are upside down on their mortgages. That happens a lot. That's happened all the time. And it's going to happen again. Today's mortgage rates are sitting at about 628 on a national average on a survey here. And it says that the rate is moderate moderately stronger in other words interest rates are getting just a little bit better they went down 0.10 they went up yesterday and uh, that was based on some news from the bank of japan bank of japan surprised everybody by raising their rate and uh, nobody saw that coming evidently so that rattled the markets they're going wow inflation must be everywhere so uh, there's just a lot to watch so what's my advice well watch for a little bit here in the first first quarter because um you know we may see rates come down a little bit um just because of factors and how rates are determined they may get down to fives in january february and they may not so uh just keep your eyes glued and be close to what's actually happening try to stay away from the headlines the headlines like foreclosures are up 69 percent because they are but 69 percent a high percentage of a small number is still a small number. You look at the foreclosure chart, there's hardly any out there. We're coming out of the forbearances, so there's some kind of rolling on the books. But it makes great headlines. Wow, they're way up 69%. And um, be careful of the rate products and the adjustable rate mortgage products that are out there. Make sure you know the worst case scenario. This is where people fell into trouble back in 2008. They were signing things. They were optimistic that, oh, I'm going to have this equity. I'll get the refinance. The loan products were bad. You could get a loan just by fogging up a mirror. Do you have a job? Yes. How much do you make? 80000 Okay. Want my W-2? No, I don't care. So anybody could get a loan. Anybody. Um, you didn't even have to have a job. <laughs> I know people that got a loan without having a job. So make sure when you're looking at that fine print that you see, okay, your payment's going to be this for a year, then it's going to be this for a year. And at the end of this term, the highest it can go is this. That's the payment that you want to look at. Can I afford that? Because they're going to qualify you at that payment. So let's say you get an adjustable rate mortgage that's a uh, three, three-year uh, buy-down. Comes in at 3.9 the first year. 4.9 the second year, 5.5 .5 the third year, 6.3 on the fourth year. Make sure that that 6.3 payment is something you can afford. If you can't, don't do it. Don't Just don't sign it. There could be plenty of ebbs and flows in that three to four year period where you get a chance to refinance your way out of it, but that's not guaranteed. And you're getting a 30 year mortgage. So don't sign up for something that's an unknown. Make sure you know. As these new products roll out and people are trying hard and people are trying to sell them to you, you need to step back and say, what are these numbers really telling me? Should I be signing this document? If you're getting a nice fixed rate over 30 years and you like it, take it. If you're getting an adjustable rate mortgage where somebody's telling you what you're going to be able to do in a couple of years, run away as fast as you can because they don't know. So don't get yourself in that situation. I'll keep updating, updating you on the numbers here. And then between shows here, I'll try to learn how to talk. Thanks. Don't forget to smash that like button.